got a strange bottom on it, so I don't know how good it's going to be on a flat lemon stove. It's a stupid single rim piece goes around, and that's all it's really touching. Um, I don't know how they got any muck on it either. Needs a wipe down. Hmm, maybe a little bit of fat spatter. I did. You probably saw it sitting on the kitchen table previous weeks, but that one's a brand new one. With a nice little lid that I don't have to take off and burn my fingers with steam. So I'm going to give that one a shot. The other one's got a real thick copper base, like, you know, like, oh shit, at least one eighth of an inch. At least like three, four mil. And uh, this one's thin. So we'll see how it performs. And the other one also, where the bloody. <laughs> Where the handle comes down, you got a little screw in the back, the screw that's leaking and I've tightened. You've actually, the handle goes for a little bit more, like maybe another, I don't know, three quarters of an inch more, and there's a crack coming up from the plastic leading up to the bloody screw. So there's all the chance in the world that the actual handle is going to come away from the, uh, the bloody thing, the screw anyway. <laughs> so it'll be unusable, but. I might hang on to that for the meantime, uh, just to see how this one goes. And if this one goes brilliantly, I'll probably just pitch that other one in scrap metal. Uh, I actually had three kettles, and I threw the other two into scrap metal. Um, when I, that was something I picked up during my business. I bought another one that was like this. It was made in Hungary. And same sort of thing, thin bottom, crimp. And the dumb bastards, I knew why I got the damn thing for five bucks while it was on the, in the cheapo shop. Whereas the crimp wasn't any good and it was leaking. And I mean, I'm talking it was leaking from day one. Um, and yeah. But uh, as for the other pot that I usually have the eggs in, that works fine on the gas stove because you've got gas flames touching it. So that extra mill wobble doesn't sort of even mean anything. But it's no good for the flat hot plate on the wood stove. Um, so I'll probably keep that other pot that I've been boiling the eggs in for use in, you know, summer months or whatever, and I'll probably give it a uh, pretty good wash today or, or whatever, and um, I don't know if I'll store it away or keep it hanging around or whatever. Anyway, I'll change this kettle over. It's getting ridiculous. <laughs> Alrighty, well it appears the uh, nice glossy shiny kettle up there, the new one, um, <laughs> as I said, only has a little strip on the base, and uh, yeah, doesn't really get over a simmer. Doesn't really even activate the whistle, no matter how long you leave it on there. So, I uh, continue to use the uh, older kettle, uh, and just don't put as much in. Um, having said that, I'm probably going to keep the new one in here anyway. I might. I might just empty it out and put it back in storage. Um, just the idea that it's going to actually boil uh, faster than the other older kettle. Um, yeah, just because it's got a thin base. Then again, you know, how many more pots and pans do you need hanging around? I might as well just put it out where I got it from. Um, back in the shed. This is what I mean about these domes. As you can see, there's a dome in there. Uh, so a lot of these things, you know, the new kettle, this one, they're great on, you know, natural gas stoves or propane stoves if you're off-grid. Um, you know, but you put them on a flat bit of half-inch steel plate and you've only just got that strip around the outside. And with this, I can sit it on there and feel it rocking back and forwards. And there's nothing wrong with the half-inch plate because even a sledgehammer wouldn't bend that. So that is perfectly flat, no question about it. Um, but, yeah. So, I probably won't be cooking much stuff uh, on the wood stove if I get a job because I won't have that much time so I'll probably wash this and leave it in here but as for the little kettle that might be going back out where it come from 
Um, funny thing is with aluminium pots, I mean, I know what it is. It's thermal expansion that it's got to do with. But, you know, I've got a frying pan here, which is completely flat, which sort of has to be to cook pancakes and stuff properly because, you you know, imagine if you had a dome in the damn thing. Imagine how much of a circus it would be trying to use the egg flip. Half the damn egg would be left in the dome part, you know. But a lot of aluminium pots are, are perfectly flat. And uh, I've got the two little other aluminium pots on there. And I found that handle. It's not quite... You know, I can just move it in and out like that, which isn't the best. But having said that, it'll still go up underneath and you still pick stuff up. So that was, <laughs> it took me about 10 seconds to find that. Um, so anyway, a bit of a change up and a few cooking related things, but uh, it's one of these things, like the wood stove takes so long just to get itself fired up and all that, that you don't then want to put a pot on which only has one third or one quarter of the bloody surface of it actually touching the hot plate because, it, you know, in case the wood stove isn't slow enough as it is. I mean, generally speaking, it'll only get things really to a simmer. Uh, and I can put in um, wattle and that... Not all the time, the last few times it hasn't, but that will often enough, most of the time, three quarters of the time, uh, cause things to boil. But all other woods, hardwoods, softwoods, whatever, uh, will only cause things to simmer. I reckon if you put coal in there, it would boil as well. But I've never tried it on coal. Uh, but, yeah, just one of these things, you know, efficiency-wise, like it, it takes... It's not full power like a propane stove as it is, so you don't then want to go and put something on which has got a big bloody dome in the middle of the pot and, and not enough, uh, you know, only one third or one quarter of the contact um, actually against the half inch steel plate that is a, a hot plate. None of these eggs say deep cycle, it just says electric storage, but uh, yeah, these are deep cycle ones. A little bit bigger capacity. These batteries honestly look smaller than uh, the previous ones. Thankfully, they're not made in Thailand, but they are made in Korea. Yeah. Um, yeah. 110 amp hour, so I'm going to go from 200 amp hour to 220 amp hour. Or what's probably realistically about freaking 30 amp hour to... Uh, Hundred and uh, two hundred and twenty amp hours. <laughs> so, oh beauty, we've got a little eye there. I can never get these to show on camera. I've shown one before in my car. It's supposed to show like a little green bit, and it's to do with the water level. Um, these ones are like your yeah, ones that uh, have caps on them, but they're maintenance free. And I asked him, "How do you fill the caps up?" And he said, "Oh, you don't." And I can tell. You pull that up, a little seam there, and you can see it goes around the blooming poles as well. So, yeah, that's uh, what I'd need to go for if I'm going to put some of the desulfation stuff in at a later point. Um, it's good, they actually test the damn things on the spot there and all that, and uh, I've seen this before in one of the ones I've got on the, what's his name, they get a little engraver and they whack in a code, and I worked out exactly what the code means. Now, the last one I had said F something or another. It says D. It's the month. <laughs> January is A, February is B, um, March is C, April is D. And then they have the number of the day that they put it on the shelf. So these only been sitting on the shelf for five days. Unlike some places where you go and the shit may have been on the shelf for freaking six to nine months. So this joint's got a hell of a turnover and that is the reason I go there. And uh, yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll be getting these out in a second. I actually think these are quite a bit smaller than the 100 amp hours I've got because the other 100 amp hours, I swear, come out bloody about here somewhere. Um... I reckon they're even thinner too. I reckon the other ones come out at another inch or inch and a half or something. 
So anyway, it's uh, not a real Primo Primo brand. $190 each, so that works out just a bit under two bucks an amp hour. The other ones I got were just a bit over a dollar an amp hour, like a dollar fourteen an amp hour. These are hundred and ninety dollars divided by hundred and ten. So you can work that out. It's like probably like I don't know, dollar eighty five an amp hour or something. They had some others there that were hundred and hundred amp hour or might have been hundred and twenty. They're three hundred and thirty dollars each and it's gonna cost me six sixty. I thought fuck. So have you got anything else? Oh yeah, actually we've got some of these other ones that are a bit cheaper. Um, just, I don't know if we, how many we got left, so it goes out there and bingo. These are out there. $380. So, so that uh, hasn't completely broke the bank, but uh, you know, I don't have a great deal left for this fortnight, but say so what? Bit of luck, I've got another five years plus worth of batteries here. Fingers crossed I can get them to seven years, but I probably only get them to five years. But anyway, it all uh, happens again. It's been raining a bit intermittently, so I'll get on with this shit while I can. Fortunately, um, I've got both the 8 mil. I've got the things that go around there, like your normal pole grab that you have for your um, vehicle. Um, and... They've got the 8mm bits on them, and some of them have got just the 8mm pieces that come straight up, um, like just like your threaded bit of bloody bolt that comes out, and you you know, you get your nut and your, your washer, which is how I think uh, the one on the fridge is. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, we've sort of got both, uh, because the pole itself has the same 8mm eyelet that would go on your ones that go on a shaft, but this obviously is just your basic pole. A lot of your cheaper deep cycles do seem to be this without your, and your better ones have your your two little, you know, um, bolts sticking up with your nut and your washer for your 8mm eyelets. But just the cheaper ones, they tend not to put it on there, but uh, anyway, here we go again. Okay, party people, it has occurred. We got it in. Um, yeah, <laughs> bit of dust on them. They're not looking too bad. Well, from the outside, except where is it? That one there. That's the negative of the one that is closest to the panels. Oh, I don't know if it's going to show, but there's actually sulfur crystals sitting on the top, and I can tell it's bubbled over, and it's sort of left a little. You see a little stain mark? Yeah. So, what I tend to notice, and I'm sure those of you who have solar systems do, especially with these ones with the old caps on it, um, the negative and the positive will drop quite a lot. And I used to have the negative, even though these aren't in series, they're in parallel, otherwise it'd be 24 volt system. Um, and I believe that thing actually is... Uh, <coughs> Charge control, that's a switchable 12 volt, 24 volt, and it'll detect whatever, you know, the batteries are to work out if you're running a 12 volt system or 20 volt, 4 volt system, it just does it automatically. Um, but you'll notice that your negative and your positive goes down, and even though I'm not running them in series, um, which would make it a 24 volt system, I'm running in parallel, the negative of this one, and I'm pretty sure this one come out of there, I'm pretty sure the positive of that one goes down a lot more than all the rest of them because it's like the initial incoming one uh, with the powers initially coming in obviously because it's right next to the thing but um, yeah I'm just about certain these are made in Thailand but it's got a thing there which says also certified for Malaysia the damn camera's reflective Ah, oh, for some strange region, it's got too much light and Malaysia. Anyway, I gather they were actually made in Thailand, so maybe I was wrong. Maybe they're made in Malaysia. Anyway, they're shit regardless. And I'm pretty certain by looking at them that they are about the same width, but probably just like another inch longer. 
than the 110. And these are just the 100 amp hour. All that's just sort of a mix of uh, grime from the uh, petroleum jelly and the dust that blows in. Obviously, there ain't going to be much dust that blows in, but I realise another problem that has made it so hard for many years. <laughs> right between the panel and the bloody top. And by the time the, the handles sag up, you're hanging under the handles literally up about here. And you can barely get the bastard in. And I was scraping that new one. I was scraping it right along the bottom of this to try and get it in. It's dangerous because if your handles don't like a forward weight, then they'll just snap off and bang. And that's what... Uh, Sort of uh, the first one, I pulled it out, and I think I, I didn't have this one initially. I only had the one battery just in here. And I pulled it out, and I slid it over this way, and the fucking handle snapped and come down on top of that. So your battery select thing there, which has multiple ones, that's stuck on one because it's actually soldered in solid because it slammed the damn battery, uh, the charge controller cover, which is sheet metal, slam that down um, quite a bit, like about three quarters of an inch or something um, and fucked up the switch and now the stupid uh, little light things uh, <laughs> the LEDs don't line up with the holes to so see the LEDs but that's a uh, Proflex it's uh, 30 amp yeah a lot of this is exposed to the dust but you've got to consider that uh, you know, there's not much of a gap, and it's sort of, we're off the ground a bit, and, I mean, that, you know, that there, I've vacuumed the insides of that out a little bit, actually, um, that there is five years worth of dust, so, but it won't stop working over a bit of dust, it just doesn't look nice, but anyway, there's the new uh, batteries, as you've already seen, um, I have, obviously, the other one in there, I might as well show you I don't always show this stuff, but older subscribers have seen it. There's the other one. Um, and there's the inverter. And I've turned the inverter off. I used to just have it plugged straight into the inverter, and now I've got a quad adapter in there. So if I ever run it, want to run anything 240 volt, I can flip this lid off and actually just drop the lead straight out over there. You know, and instead of you know trying to... Run it all the way inside to my main power boards and then come back out again. I can literally just plug it in. But um, that yellow lead uh, will actually plug into there. But I just thought, well, I've got the room and I'll put a quad adapter in. So that's what I did a while back. Anyway, there we go. That's, um, that's how she all goes. Hmm, there's me uh, 12 volt lines going to the house, and that's your mains lead there, a little yellow lead, um, which basically comes up through here, and the main leads, I had to be careful when I was stuffing around with all this veranda, that's them there, that's your, uh, your 12 volt leads, uh, going to the cigarette lighter plug near my bed that I charge my tablet on and whatnot. Anyway, I've turned the inverter off and I'm not going to do a damn thing with this. And it's gone from sort of drab and cloudy to intermittent spring shower sort of things where you get a blast of rain but only for about a minute and to this beautiful bright sun like this. And I may go ahead and wipe all this down to help it uh, so we do have a little bit of dirt on there. So I'm going to wipe that down with a towel or something. And I'll probably leave that for today and all of tomorrow and then turn it on tomorrow night. And that basically um, should be a go again. And uh, as for the little plants that run under the heating there, well, they can just fucking handle it <laughs> and just live with it. I have been thinking about and I probably should do it today. Um, well, I've got a lot of other interesting things to do. Shouldn't take too long to make a little cardboard cover up to try and trap the heat inside that's coming out of the uh, Seahawk heated propagation mat. Um, yeah, I chuck the uh, instead of stuffing there with cardboard blowing away in the wind, I chuck the um, what's his name's blankets out of my bed straight over the top of the panels to block the light because you 
what you want to do first is stop the power coming in, then disconnect the batteries, positive first, negative next, and then put the batteries back in, negative first, positive next, that's the way I do it anyway. Um, and then uh, basically take your bed sheets off because a lot of these, it all depends, but most charge controllers prefer the battery to be powering them before the solar panel. Um, and yeah, so if you put blankets over there, they're going to be blocked from the light reasonably well, and uh, you'll get what you, what they, how they want you to do it. Anyway, um, that's that basically in a nutshell, but there was a little spring shower while I had the blankets on, so I'll have to dry those uh, tonight over the wood heater, and uh, maybe I might just Chuck them out on the clothes horse now because it seems it's warming up all of a sudden after being cloudy all morning. Anyway, that's how she goes. There you go. That's the uh, box on berries. Pretty bloody large compared to usual. That's uh, quite a surprise. Obviously related to the goji berry. Now, uh, there was ones I cut off, one of the ones that I um, cut the bulk out of, obviously, uh, didn't poison it or didn't poison it enough, and uh, it decided to, I cut it all off, all the tops off and everything like that, but it decided to spray it back with a bunch of green growth, uh, a little bit high for the sheep to get to, so I thought, stuff it, I'll cut it off because it's all full of blooming berries and hence for seeds, and I'll throw it in uh, one of the uh, stacks of dead box thorn that we're going to burn, so as to burn the seeds. Um, yeah, but I mean, this thing is absolutely loaded with berries, and uh, surprise, surprise, a lot of the ones around the house, regardless of the fact there's been bugger all rain, uh, a lot of the ones around the house are absolutely pouring with berries, which I should show you. Now that's sort of smaller ones. And I think in the back here there's some decent size ones again. There's a bloody lot of them this year. Uh, these are all smaller as well, but I mean there's no shortage of the sheer numbers of them. Look at that, two inches of stem. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is there about ten in two inches of stem? <laughs> so, we're going pretty good. But I don't know if we are going pretty good because I'm trying to kill off all this stuff. And uh, here we are with uh, berries all over the damn place. So, and of course, this, you know, goes right around the blooming house, up through here. Yeah, anyway, the sheep have been eating it, I can tell. Did give away all the uh, stuff at the bottom. is all without leaves. you got all these sheep marks. And, you know, I'll stand here and I'll watch them eating it all. And, uh, yeah, basically, yeah. Uh, <laughs> One of them got into eating the um, the polystyrene again the other day. I don't know if it was the same one, but second shot at the polystyrene. And uh, yeah, I think they're running out of food a bit. They uh, are eating serrated tussock, which they really shouldn't be doing that. Which means things must be getting hard. So we've got little sprouts of green grass all coming up along the driveway. Um, like that, and sprouting. What I really mean is, I've kicked the dirt off this one, a whole ton of little grass sprouts there. I kicked the dirt off this a couple of days ago. So it's coming, but uh, it needs to come pretty quick. And then Mrs. has returned the box that used to sit inside my kitchen. I uh, just taped it up with this uh, 
crappy ass packing tape that doesn't know uh, if it's leaving behind its adhesive or taking it with it. Um, <laughs> as a result, there's a little bit of adhesive on the outer side as opposed to the lower side. Anyways, cut it there, bit of an arch to help it keep a little bit more strength. Um, and this is going to go over the top of all that uh, in an attempt to keep the warmth in a little bit more. Now, at such a time that I go over to this on grid house in probably three weeks, maybe four, um, I shall use this. Um, but instead of sort of having this side against the wall to keep the heat in at night and then take it off again the next morning I'll actually have that side to the glass to let the light in but then keep the heat from escaping out the back and of course once I'm, I've got these plants in this uh, on grid house well I'll probably just run the damn timer you know 12 hours at night or something like that because uh, power consumption isn't that much of an issue. I mean, let's face it, it's only 17 watts anyway and, you know, when you're on grid you're not running off the battery system as the uh, days are cloudy half the day and blah, blah, blah. Might be alright with amorphous panels but uh, I'm running monocrystalline so I've considered getting an amorphous panel but you know, right now I could barely afford the bloody new batteries, let alone uh, start playing around with those solar panels. And I still have a little bunch of other things I want to do, as opposed to piss around installing solar panels that I probably uh, ain't going to be using anyway and can't afford at the moment. Anyway, um, of course, I've still got to. What I'm talking about is I've got to get get some guttering along there and I've got the guttering and all that and hopefully work out some guttering for that. Um, I might as well tell you guys about all that. Um, the, what's his name? The line I've decided to go with, um, it's about 30 and a half centimetre for half inch line with no guarantee it's actually going to get there. Uh, for three quarter inch line which is I think it's actually 20 mil line um, that works out 46 centimeter and it comes in rolls of 200 meters so basically so like one eighth of a mile rolls yeah and I've got probably uh, it's more than a quarter mile to go I think it's about a quarter mile or something I've got to run it so I'll probably end up buying two of those rolls but yeah 46 centimeter Australian uh, as opposed to 30 and a half cents to have a half inch that's probably not really going to do it to three quarter inch that yeah is definitely likely to do it that um, it is actually mains pressure and there is more or less no pressure left when it gets here but that um, remember the cows run out of water over there what feeds their water is a one inch line and my father says that one inch lines over big distances are no good. You need at least one and a quarter inch uh, to not slow up the flow. But they've got water coming in. And I mean, it's not really powerful. It's just sort of gurgling away there. Um, but they've run a one inch line and... Holy fucking cow. It's, it's probably at least half a mile. Um, and you know, there's still got water coming out the end and if I've got a quarter mile under gravity feed um, you know, it should be alright with three quarter inch but I wouldn't this is why I was a bit worried about using a uh, half inch because it just probably wasn't going to make it but you know, another 15 cents a, uh, 15 cents a metre more, 15 and a half cents a metre more um, to guarantee it's going to work as opposed to probably maybe not, um, I'll go with the bigger stuff. Anyway, that's one of these things that uh, I'll afford it when I afford it, but uh, 
hopefully not too long down the track I can at least get a gutter at least on this side. It's going to be a bit of a shit storm with other. This one, like the roof sheets are very close to the glass there, but the other one, the roof sheets are like fucking all over the place. So it's going to be a bit harder to do the other one. But um, even if I only get this one installed, hey, it's something, you know, even if I only get, you know, fill two IBCs or two and a half IBCs just having this one, well, it's better than just... Uh, you know, bringing it in and having to try and pump it down there sort of thing and, and paying for it all, but uh, like a lot of these things off grid, you know, these things there that you never notice when you're on grid that um, Americans, you know, aren't really used to rainwater, we are here in Australia, but I mean, even, you know, like self-planted plum trees and shit like that, you know, there's a lot of things that just sort of happen and if you're on grid and living in the city you just wouldn't notice it and it's just sort of like a it all goes on but you just don't really realize it or you know and then take that thought further but when you're uh, off grid and especially when you're a Chinese peasant you know you'll find a use for absolutely every bloody thing that you can somehow milk some sort of a resource out of, um, you know, and yeah, that's why the uh, Chinese take the, the world's scrap cardboards, uh, scrap metal, rusty metal, and they turn it all into products because they can work out how to get those shitty ass raw resources into usable products that unfortunately are, are so cheap and tacky that they usually fall to bits and then straight back up in the bloody scrap metal again in a uh, month's time anyway. <laughs> Alrighty, this is too good not to show you guys. It's a quarter past five, and the sun's just about buggered. Yeah. I'm uh, here at the, uh, what's his name? I'm trying to juggle my fingers around here. And uh, I'm going to actually get the bloody thing to contact with one hand. There you go. 13.22 volts. No shit. Now, let us walk out the house for a second. Just uh, turn the multimeter off there. And I'll show you what the light situation is like. So 13.22. You would assume if the rest voltage is 12.6, 12.7, uh, that means we'd have bright shining sun still. Not a friggin' hope. In fact, it's a bit windy here, I just put my finger over the mic. In fact, <laughs> the sun's sort of setting. Yeah, it's long gone. <laughs> So there we go. Ugh, more wind. I can't really show you terribly well. I'll see if I can get up on here and show you. Yeah, it's sort of shining over there. Yeah, it's because that's where the sun is. And we've got this shitty blooming overcast crap. Uh, the light failing fast and those batteries are probably getting absolutely jacked in eggs. but for some reason uh, we're holding a uh, beautifully high voltage still so anyway I believe that uh, she's time to turn the inverter back on uh, it was a uh, crap morning and then a reasonable enough day uh, for a few hours. It was better yesterday. Um, after I put the batteries in, the sun came out bright as bright. So, uh, and I gave all the uh, panels a little wipe down, which I think I mentioned that. Um, so anyway, inverter back on. Back in business, and this phone desperately needs to be charged. Woo! 
Thanks, guys. 1,001 subscribers. Fantastic.